Let's compare kinetic energies in a two-particle, one-dimensional collision in different reference frames. So we could have one reference frame in which particle one is coming in and particle two is moving like that. And in particular, so we can call this the ground frame. And now let's consider the center of mass frame. And in the center of mass frame, let's remind you um, that when we have two different reference frames, the velocity, we'll call this the ground frame g, in the ground frame is equal to the velocity of the object. We'll actually write it this way, just unprimed, v1. The velocity in the center of mass frame, so this is the velocity in the cm frame, plus the relative velocities between the frames, and that's why that's the velocity at the center of mass. So this was our rule for describing how velocities change in different reference frames. And so we can draw the picture in the center of mass frame, v1 initial prime and v2 initial prime. Now, let's compare kinetic energies in these different frames. So we know that the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame is just 1 half m1 v1 initial squared prime, put the prime there, plus 1 half 2 initial prime squared, kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. How do we calculate the kinetic energy in the lab frame? Well, that's a little bit more complicated, and we'll need a little algebra to start that. So let's put kinetic energy in the ground frame. We know is 1 half m1 v1 initial squared plus 1 half m2 v2 initial squared. Now what I have to do is use the law, the velocity relationship. And this is going to take a little bit of algebra. We have m1. I'll write v1 prime plus vcm. And remember that any quantity squared is the dot product, v dot b. So I'm going to dot this with itself, v1 initial prime plus v center of mass. And I have the second term, which looks identical to this first term. I'll write it all the way down here. 1 half m2 v2 initial prime plus vcm vector dot scalar dot product of v2 initial prime plus vcm. Now, when you take a dot product, remember there's four terms here. There's v1 prime dot v1 prime, which is just v1 prime squared. There's v center of mass dot v center of mass. So that's v center of mass squared. And then there's the cross term. And because they're identical, there's a factor of 2. And it will be repeated below. So the kinetic energy in the ground frame is 1 half m1. So we'll take v1i prime dotted with itself. That's v1i prime squared. We have the cross term, which is a factor of 2, which will cancel this. So the cross term is m1. That canceled the factor of 2. v1i prime dot vcm plus the vcm with itself. So that's 1 half m1 vcm squared. Now I have exactly the same thing on the next one. So we'll write that down. 1 half v2i prime squared plus m2 v2i prime dot vcm, that's the same in both, plus 1 half m2 vcm squared. Now, let's look carefully at what we have. We have 1 half m1 v1 prime squared. This is an m2. 1 half m2 v2i prime squared. So we have 1 half m1 v1i prime squared plus 1 half m2 v2i prime squared. And you're already noticing that's the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame. We have the total mass, 1 half m1 plus m2 vcm squared. I can just put a little check to show which terms I've done so far. And now here's the interesting one. We have m1 v1 
i prime plus m2 v2 i prime dot v c m. That represents this term and this term added together. But recall that the center of mass reference frame is defined by the condition that the total momentum in that frame is zero. So this term is zero. And thus we get that the kinetic energy in the ground frame is equal to the kinetic energy in the center of mass frame plus one half m1 plus m2 times vcm squared. And that's how kinetic energy is in different reference frames. And the next thing we'll look at is how that changes when we have a collision.